case. I had some fun doing a the uh, elephant man. I'm gonna uh, just do a little oh, nice uh, metal stuff that I bought. So back ground, and so I'll be spray painting white onto black, and I could do like a different color background for it. And handy having a little printer. I usually cut with uh, heavy duty mount boards, which is a bit tricky because it's super thick, and by the end of it, your fingers are stinging and you've probably got blisters but it kind of gives me a really simple look to the stencils um, but this is kind of fun because you're just using um, paper so it's way faster so this means say for example if I've got the black I can do crazy background and then when I take off the crazy background then I've got a black shape so now with the second stencil I'm going to cut out basically anything that looks light and I'm going to do it really simply because sometimes the, uh, the simplest ones are the best and then if I need to do any little extra details, I can go back to the other one, the first one, and then it'll mean that I can go back and do a few more little blacks on top of the whites. Does that make sense? So it's kind of uh, trickier doing little bridges. And when I talk about bridges, Say for example, if you're cutting out this whole stencil and you want to have a little black part in there, you'd have to have a bridge going towards that. So if you look at stencils, you can see that sometimes the best stencils are the one where they do the bridge in an interesting place. So you don't really notice what's going on. So why I thought this was going to be quite a simple one was the image is really quite striking. It's uh, the Elephant Man, John Merrick. And I was kind of joking that this would be a good outfit to wear to go down to the shops. Because you're obviously, you're not wearing a mask, but you are wearing a mask. If you see what I mean. And uh, so you could do some quite simple ones little lines and also I like there's a, there's a quote I think it's a quote from Matisse correct me if I'm wrong but it says art's a lie that helps you to see the truth so you can cheat a little bit and you can kind of make up your own rules when you're making art and that's why I like it and also I like the fact that there isn't a committee telling you, okay, well, we think it would be great for you to uh, do this piece of art, you know, in this kind of style. And that's something that I had a bit of a time doing before when I was trying to work out what I was really going to do. I was doing freelance work and people were saying, oh, do it like this, do it in this style, can you do this like this? And... Um, yeah, I didn't really kind of like that too much. It's a job, pays the wages, you know, gives you some good pocket money. But um, with this, I can basically just, I can wake up, I can decide what I want to do, I can work on it, and um, great if I like it, cool. If I don't like it, then it's not really the end of the world. And also, if you make mistakes, you always learn from those mistakes about 
better ways of uh, doing things. You know, it's like, oh, well, I could have saved a lot of time doing it like this or doing it like that. And uh, then the next time you do it, it'll be a lot faster. And also all those sort of, how, what are we going to do today meetings tend to drag on. This way you can just get on it, just do it. And sometimes it's the fastest ideas that work out the best. Like I did the social distancing print recently, and the original of that was just, I found a picture, I liked it, I drew on it, I posted it out. People thought it was really funny, we put it out as print. It wasn't like a big meeting about what we're going to do. And also, if you're doing things that are kind of topical, it's interesting because obviously we're all kind of trying to work out what we're uh, what we're thinking and what we're doing. If you can kind of use art to create a message, it's the best. You think about Picasso, probably the greatest anti-war painting, Guernica. Now he was probably just really affected by the bombing of the village and all the people who were affected by that. He thought, well, I can't really go there, so I can make art that goes there. And um, I've just noticed there's like a tiny little, nice little round eye poking out. And uh, if I get that, with all the kind of not very detailed stuff. You can kind of focus on one tiny area and make that area really detailed. So hopefully when it's sprayed, you'll see this little, this little eye just poking out. Now right when I'm doing this, I'm thinking, okay, cool. So. I guess if, you, if you're looking at an image, you kind of squint your eyes up and you've just got to try and work out, all right, when I squint my eyes up, it makes things a lot more basic. And that's kind of a great stencil is something that works on a really basic level. And so uh, hopefully it's not too basic that when you see it, you're looking at it going, oh, what is that? It's just enough detail for you to actually be able to see what's going on. But I do spend a lot of my time when I'm doing this kind of squinting, like I'm looking at the sun, because I don't want to get too worried about the details. I want to get the overall picture. So some of you are probably looking at this going, well, that's easy is just like taking the white parts and cutting them out. What's the big deal? And it's like, well, yeah, what is the big deal? I guess what makes it interesting is some people use, um, you know, like Photoshop and Photoshop kind of decides what's dark and what's light. But I don't think it ever does a very good job. It does kind of different decisions because it doesn't know all it sees is a bunch of you know shapes it doesn't know what it's trying to actually do a picture of so sometimes and most of the time those kind of computer generated stencils just look really weak because um, they don't they just don't really make sense right so I've got a bit of a situation here because I've got to have this bit and if I cut all around here, this bit's going to go. So, I'm going to do a little cheat. So this whole area is going to stay like that, like that. Because no one's going to go, oh, this bit here would have been great, but it was changed and now it doesn't make any sense. Well, it does kind of make sense what I'm talking about when you're kind of having to cheat a little bit. So all of that white is coming out. So that's all the dark stuff. 
Now that doesn't look like anything at all, but remember we're doing the opposite. So we're doing that, spraying the background, so we have a black shape, which is all of this, and then all of this is going to be the white parts. So we just need to keep cutting the white parts and the white parts. And also if you, um, you cut the stencil and something doesn't look right, you can always go back and adjust it. So it's good to always have a little test stencil first of all. And, uh, so if, you, if you're looking at this going, what, who is this guy with a sack on his head? He's called John Merrick. And uh, he was called the Elephant Man and he was born uh, severely physically uh, handicapped. And so it was a story about how he was kind of perceived back in the day in the sort of uh, in the olden days as it were and uh, yeah it's an amazing film it's how we kind of lived and uh, how we survived and everyone kind of treated him like a freak I guess that's a story that we can all relate to which is why it was such a popular film so now I've got to Think about this for a minute, because that area there has got to be black. There's a little bit of white here. So if I do the edges of this eye, kind of highlight them a little bit more than they would be, then inside that area, you'll see the black area. And then inside that, see the little eye poking out and I can always go in there with a little tiny bit of white paint and add that eye highlight it's all about the kind of humanity of the image so, so we're getting there got that let's do a little line because obviously there isn't really such a big line between the two areas, but it doesn't need to be completely. It's your version of the image. So you can make it your own. And also, get a little bit of tape. And if you cut and break anything, use a little bit of that just to patch it back together. So you cut a little sliver of this. Oh, I should, I mean, I know I'm sort of, this is also a um, workshop for kids as well as grown-ups, obviously, um, goes without saying, careful with this knife, you know, don't cut your fingers off. That's the uh, health and safety bit of the lesson out of the way. Um, let's do a little bit more of the hat like a kind of a jaunty baker boy hat that he's wearing. And he's probably off down the shops to get some uh, get some groceries. I thought it was a cool image because you know we're all feeling a little bit isolated right now. Imagine the isolation of him having to uh, you know be in this situation. my eyes up a little bit, looking at that bit there. Now, I've been working in my shed in the countryside, so it's not really downward going into London at the moment. Um, and it's actually been pretty cool because I've just got loads of time to work. And um, yeah, it's actually quite nice being out of London. I could spend the whole day here rather than having to get on a commuter train and go into London. So I feel pretty fortunate. And the other thing that I did recently was I had an old door. So I've been painting on that and just doing bits and pieces. Now, that's the 
the white part pretty much. Would it actually make sense as an image? It's really hard for you to actually make any have any idea about how this is going to work. But we can give it a go. We'll see how it works. So I'm going to kind of grab something to actually paint on. So I've got a nice little. Bit of white paper, got the paper stencil, and I've got all of that. Now, the thing about spray paint is it's massively toxic, so I'm going to wear a, um, a mask to spray this. Give me back in 30 seconds. some paint back here so this is some wicked cool stuff So when I actually have to spray, I'm going to put this bad boy on um, and also I'm going to open up the yeah, outside of it. Give me a sec. So, spray that. I'm going to just uh, do a little spray at the back of that one, and then also the back of this one. This is an old, uh, I think Chef Berry talks about it and how uh, handy it is have a little bit of stickage on the stencil. Now this is the first time I've used this. It's like a, a metal. Yeah, it's basically black metal. We all like a bit of black metal. So, uh, let's pop him. Let's pop it down on there. Now, oh, it's really down this thing. So, one thing you've got to remember is registration, so that when we put the first one down, okay, we have to basically put the second one down in exactly the same place. So I'm registering it like that. So what I thought would be cool is to actually do a little bit of Crazy blue in the background. Okay. And then when I take that off. So 
remember, that was the first one that we just cut the outside. Now the second one we're going to do, come up and down, like that. And if I've done the right thing, and I've actually used enough of the, uh, the spray mount, that will all stick down. But, however, what we don't want to have is have a whole bunch of extra. Sometimes you see stencils and they've got these kind of things around there. Oh no, it looks awful. Hate it. So, Now, there's a big chance that this is actually going to look terrible, um, but you know, hey, whatever, you get the idea, and uh, I'm not really that bothered, to be honest, I'm having fun, so, be a bit gentle sticking stuff down, because you may end up, the corner might be a mark on the spray paint that's underneath, you won't have that problem if you've actually been sensible and waited. 10 minutes. I'm actually indoors, which is a really bad idea. Um, you want to be like outdoors and you want to have, um, obviously I've got my lovely mask on, which is why I sound like a robot. So wherever the spray paint is going to go now, it's not going to go onto the lovely black background. And um, one thing I've got to be careful of is some of my um, some of my white paint is really pretty chunky. It's not actually, um, I'm using some pretty clogged up caps. So there are different types of caps. You've got fat caps, you've got medium caps, you've got skinny caps. I'm using little kind of small caps. So let's give it a go. You see how far I'm actually holding it from the edge from the actual image. I'm not like I'm letting it fall quite gently. I'm not really being super careful here. So I'm just having fun. But you could do it really right. You don't need to just go, oh my god, I've got to cover up a lot of different bits. You can just take your time and do it really carefully. Obviously if you're not sure about this, get a grown up to help. And if you're you know 45 years old then you should probably know how to do this. Alright, let's try it. Let's lift this off and see what happens. When you're lifting it, be careful that you don't smudge everything. There you go. Now, I don't think that looks great, to be honest. So then I can actually cut another black stencil and go back in and add some more stuff, do some shading. But that gives you a pretty good idea about how to do this kind of thing. Um, I wouldn't say it was my greatest stencil ever, um, but that gives you a, a sense of how it actually works. Um, it looks like it's got like a dinosaur, like a three-legged dinosaur here. But um, hey, it's a lot of fun. And like I said, you can go in and do the eyes and all that detail. You can go back to the image and try and do some more shading. You can go back over it with a little bit of pen. But I think what it needs is a third layer of black to kind of pick things up. But it gives you an idea of how it all works. Thanks a lot, guys. See you later.